is this going to get? Is anyone going to watch this episode? Like your brain is constantly being bombarded by, by this social media adrenaline. Yeah. And, 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 and the, the, the power that you give in this third party platform is so massive that you forget about living your life and about like being in the moment with the surroundings that you have. And, yeah. and the problem is that, Social media is broken into different categories and it's also broken geographically. So what we get as a liberal state in New York on Google or Facebook is very different from what people in Texas get from their Facebook and their Google. So there's a tremendous difference between what I'm consuming as information and what people in the you know middle of the country or in Canada, like the West is consuming as information, right? So there's the is perpetuating the differences rather than bringing people together and oh, yeah. people that's the thing that is objective the way it gets to them so they get angry when people doesn't think the same way they do because they're like how can you be so stupid you don't see the facts coming to you like i do exactly and obviously, yeah. It's like, yeah they don't because it's the, it's like yeah like model for your own like belief it's a ideological echo chamber a hundred percent. The algorithm is made so that you only see the things that are going to validate your yeah. leaders and your point of view. So yeah, when you see this, like, for instance, that 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 pedophile ring thing that's been like, I didn't even know, like the Q on, what is it? Q, Q whatever the Q on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like, it was like, apparently, I don't even know what it is. I've heard about it. And like, it's been brought up several times. It's like, that's just a viral uh gossip like it's like a high school gossip yeah that's gone viral and it's and been gone like wrong because a guy is went there to make a shooting because he actually thought there were actual pedophiles there yeah to me that's yeah. incredible that's that's like yeah. how far like there was also another documentary that i watched and this is it goes to show you man like not everything that you see on social media is true Absolutely. um yeah yeah um because i saw this documentary there was this guy i forget what it was i don't know if it was a youtube clip or a documentary but this guy made up created a fake phony restaurant in london that <laughs> had like that it was just a name it was like i'm just gonna put a name on yelp and i'm gonna make all my friends make comments and give it five stars and he pretty much created on yelp a five star restaurant in london that was super expensive and people kept calling the number that was listed on Yelp. And as I like, know, sorry, we're booked. Sorry, we're booked. Sorry, we're booked for like six months. The <laughs> phone wouldn't stop ringing because people wanted to go to this fake restaurant that never existed. So that's, that's true. And there was like so many, um, there, there was also on uh, marketplace on CBC, they usually do, um, they try to catch, you know, people they're doing wrong things. And then there was the story of like, there was a segment about Yelp and you know how there's actually fake restaurants that are listed. So, I mean, I don't think that's yeah. really um, a new thing per se though. Yeah, yeah like, but, that, that, but it goes to show you that what we see on Facebook and what we see on the internet and people are just taking it at face value is what's given us this like huge gap in what we think here and what we're, what other people are thinking there. Like it's, it's, it's almost like not, I'm not going to excuse asshole because there's going to be, you know, dick, like people that are dicks, but it, it's almost like, it's not, I don't blame people that are so blinded by what they consume as information and they're going in favor of a cause that is like, it doesn't make any sense. But uh, the technology has been equal, like, yeah. but the technology, the technology also like, it's like developing like more faster than we think. So it's like, you know, the people who are like hooked onto it, it's just, it's already there. So, yeah. so that's, yeah, yeah and, it's already and, at, the, at our fingertips. Yeah, if, no. if you watch his documentary, I'm sorry that I know we were going to talk about comedy, but I made oh, it all like oh, weird. No, 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 please, no, 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 watching this documentary the social dilemma it's like it, it was all the thoughts that i had in my head because like i've been pondering this and i've been thinking about like why is this so weird why is 2020 yeah. what it has like there was like this shift in social like the way that we perceive things socially since like 2016 it's been like such a dramatic change uh, uh on so many levels and some of it is good and some of it is like kind of like very confusing right mm -hmm. um so 
I've been trying, I was always like, okay, what's the explanation for this? How come there's so many people that support Trump or that are in favor of certain things in parts of the country? And it's so obvious that that shouldn't be the case. And then the social dilemma just kind of like put it everything into a conceptual, like, this is why this is happening. And it was it was mm -hmm. validated by professionals who created all these different platforms or yeah. helped create these platforms. And then you're like, oh, fuck, they didn't know what they were creating. All this mm -hmm. was meant to be good for like what we do on a daily basis. But it turns out that it's it's becoming this this uh, uh, un, unmanageable uh, technology machine that doesn't really give us um the answer to where we should be going you know what i mean like oh absolutely. i think i think for comedy like i don't know how it is in, in montreal well i mean i was there briefly because i was i was there with my well we were engaged to my fiance at the time in 2017 and the montreal comedy scene it was very different to like i started in 2011 so i remember seeing melanie at the comedy works when when it existed and everything mm -hmm. um and it was it was i mean it was clicky but not to the point like i remember when i was there in 2017 it was very different the comedy scene in montreal i re like i i was almost no, like no exactly like, I, I was like I, I don't even know where to go like i didn't know where to go i didn't know what was the cool thing like french comedy what was was the most popular thing to do so i was like okay well, i guess let's do french comedy because that's what's cool mm -hmm. but but it was it, it shifted it changed but I was hearing things like in the comedy scene in Toronto that it was very divided. It was like conservative comics against liberal comics. And, and it was like, what happened? Like, I thought comedy was just one thing. I yeah. thought the whole purpose of comedy was being funny. Like, why is it this like division that is so vast? Oh, no, that's yeah, true. No. And I, yeah, and I could, I could actually vouch for that because like, I actually, I did comedy in 2012. So I started a year after you. And um, I went back to school and I went back again. But yeah, so like, I mean, when we started more or less at the same time, like, yeah, there were clicks, but it was a community. Now that I went, when I went back in 2017, it was like, okay, the game changed, you know, there's new people. All right, I have to, to reshift. But it's yeah. like, but it's like the community that we see, and this is just my opinion, not to disrespect anybody, but like the clicks are more like high school. You know, it's not a, it's not like, you know, we're all, you know, we're all in this together. We're all comics. We, we're all supporting each other. It's like you really see like who are in freaking clicks. Yeah. Oh and it, in Montreal is just one micro case of what's happening globally because New York is New York is very different, different because it, there there is clicks in New York. But but it's New York. I think that it remains the place where what's funny is funny. And that's what I like mm -hmm. New York so much before pre COVID, obviously, because right now it's like obviously. there's really nothing going on. It's just homeless people on the street. Um, it's really not the same. But before COVID, New York remained as the place where if you were funny, whether you were liberal or conservative or whatever, if you had a funny set and you were a funny person, you could get on stage. Yeah, and a professional, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and a professional person off stage, right? Because you know, yeah, uh, yeah. But no, it's I like honestly, I'm agreeing with you 100, percent Santi. And you know, and 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 this is a good thing as you uh, you brought up. But you know, what, it's just at times, right? And I want to mention uh, Gapes. He was saying social media equals dopamine feedback loop. You know, so I guess like everyone, everyone's seeing on social 100%. media, they, yeah, they. Uh, they repent, you know. They they say to you, they repent. They're back at you. Yeah, but man, it's it perpetuates, just so, man. It perpetuates. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It perpetuates. It's sad. You know, it's sad. But but I mean, like, I think that the question that we need to ask, um, because I'm all about moving forward from here. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think that comedy will ever be the same, or you know, New York will ever be the same. I don't think that Montreal will ever be. Well, maybe, I don't know. Like, I can only speak for myself, but like, I think things will be different. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean they're gonna be, they're gonna be bad and different. I think things are gonna be better. I think this is kind of like a reset button, and we can, we can. What is it that we need to do as as people, as comics, to improve upon what we do? You know, our craft, mm -hmm. uh, our our the way we approach certain things. And I think that that's a question that we should be asking as comics and as people is like, okay, what do I really want to talk about? Mm -hmm. And what is it that that matters to me, right? Because most people, mm -hmm. you know, like I think COVID, uh, when we get back on stage more, more, you know, formally, and we're mm -hmm. 
like you know there's a vaccine or something going on and that we can get back to normal i think the material is going to be there's going to be obviously a lot of covid jokes and people with the same you know like you know whatever same five minutes which, of covid which is kind of the ele elephant in the room so hey, yeah because oh, i i know oh, that they were comedians oh hey peter yeah, yeah, what's I up, what's up? remember uh peter bowen he, 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 he yeah. just came on <laughs> nice to meet you peter Peter, I, do, I remember they were kind of comedians that were pretty preachy about it. I don't do COVID jokes, but I mean, on the same time, everybody went through this. Everybody's so going to go through COVID. Yeah, exactly. It, it, so it, you got to do them. To avoid you, the subject, yeah. Yeah, you got to do them. I mean, like, it doesn't mean, like, make your whole set about, like, like when Trump got yeah, elected, sure. everybody was like, you know, it was five minutes of Trump. And, like, at, at the first couple of months, is like, okay, yeah, I, we get it. You know, you, yeah. you, yeah, that's your, what you, but, you have to make those jokes one funny and two they need to be consistent with who you are as a comic oh, absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely no like, it's not everybody can do trevor noah jokes uh like yeah. you know on in your set like you know what i mean like you have to keep it consistent with what you're trying to accomplish so right now is like especially in the us like the us <laughs> is such a like such a weird place to be right now because like this election has been like I've never been, I've never seen so many people like with the go vote, go vote, go vote. Like I was watching yeah. the NBA vote, 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 vote. Jeez. Everybody's like, like do it, vote. Like you, you like yeah. do whatever it takes. Like you know, take like, your penis out, vote. From like the South Park, vote or die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah, no, I yeah, it it's crazy. It's, it's very, it's very. The stakes are super high. So, um, yeah. but it's because everybody now like kind of like. I, I I believe and I, I just I'm waiting because I don't want to make any predictions because I could mm -hmm. be wrong because this country Ask could Sid, 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 Sid probably knows the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, Sid will tell you that he's he's, he's gonna be a contrarian. Sid's gonna say he's like, Oh, Trump's gonna get elected. Like he just likes to go against the yeah. grain. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> he'll say that. <laughs> That's true. But I, I think that and I don't want to make predictions because like one, I wouldn't be totally surprised if Trump got elected because yeah. there's a lot of parts of this country that that i'm like okay maybe there's a lot of trump supporters that are closeted but the numbers don't make sense he can't get elected like if you look at all the polls and all the people that have been like the, the people that liked him were people that were in wall street the people that and even them they're like this guy's crazy we can't really do this anymore so yeah. it's like the numbers don't don't add up for him to be elected so i think this was just like four years of absolute crazy absolute like just kind of like yeah. wow what the hell were we thinking yeah we're the land of the free but that was too much like this is crazy mm -hmm. um and, and i think even that, at that like and even at that like even under his uh presidency that you know not only he put like the states in the the fucking shits but even at that with 2020 it, like halting everything it just sort of uh sort of shows like what actually went wrong for so many years i mean yeah. like for example like he's uh for example like he's very like anti-lgbt he uh, reversed you know uh, same-sex couples he doesn't want you know same-sex couples to to get uh to adopt a baby and and whatnot like there was that and also you know with the whole transgender life being lost and all that like he he, he doesn't really you know there's something he did, there's some stuff he doesn't really care about and he shows he doesn't you know? care about anything he only anything, cares about exactly. himself yeah, he only cares like nice. You know, and anyone like if if the LGBTQ community came out and said like Trump's the greatest, he'd be like, uh, the LGBTQ community is super great. I'm good friends with them. I really yeah. love them. <laughs> or he'll do like other like like people I know. They'll just find you just find the guy the the gay guy that happens to agree with him and yeah. hide behind his fucking opinions. Because I don't know if you saw that, but uh, recently we have the some issues with the N word because there were. Uh, some teacher mm, in university yeah. that tried to say the n-word uh, in a context of uh, what, what was the ethnicity of the teacher <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm betting on white but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's an, <laughs> there's an actual book it's called like uh white n-word of america which is a french canadian type of thing and he got uh, or he or she got in trouble for that so basically i mean you uh, shouldn't no say it yeah you should like that's just it goes without saying like even if like you like the end word is the only one that you it's like you can say you can justify like the c word the f word like on some level but the end word is kind of like no 
No, no, I mean, like, I mean, I don't know, but why would you, okay, you Peter? insult? Peter, oh, can okay. you please? It's okay. He could he could say, it, but like you know, if they jump him, I'm not jumping in. You know, I'm just watching. Facebook are so fucking hilarious. Like all those white people trying to find the black guy that happens to agree with him, and then hide behind their fucking opinions and being like, "See, the black guy agree with him, so with me, so I'm right." And oh man, I'm like, oh. I'm trying to stay away from that fucking thing because I do believe that if I ask ten black guy, they will have a different answer to me. So. I'm like, well, yeah, sort sort this out for yourself. I don't have any any horse on that race because if I want to insult somebody, I think it's pretty lazy to go with the racial thing. I would go like with his own default or qualities, yeah. yeah. And that's it. well, yeah, because the thing the thing is that I like like you know in comedy, it's not the word that you say is how you say it, right? Like, yeah. okay. I mean, and and that goes with pretty much everything. If you if you're saying the n word and you're saying it with like hate and everything, like oh, yeah. then you're you're yeah. racist. Like Kr Kramer, like when Kramer said the n word, yeah. like oh. you could tell that you could tell that he like meant like he was like there was some real yes. ingrained racism in him. Yeah, but when sure. Louis was saying the n word uh, in one of his jokes in 2010, oh, it, like jokes. you hear the joke and it was like oh yeah no it was a joke. Even yeah. though, like, it could be like right now is miss like you know everybody hates Louis and everything, but like back then, people weren't saying anything against Louis because you could tell that it was a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's all well again. You know, uh, going back to comedy, it's like it's the way you you know you word a joke. But I mean, I'm not gonna say it. None of us are gonna say this. But I, I mean, I mean, I don't want. I don't want to. I, but you know, probably, probably, <laughs> uh, probably, Joey's one. Gonna, no, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, but honestly, two things like two, like, like two things like, again. Santa, you're absolutely right, and you know what? Poor Michael Richards, man. Like, like when he said that, like he he was one of my idols from Seinfeld. I find he made yeah. Seinfeld, and then when he just went on stage and said that, I'm like, mm. Por qué? why? Like now, yeah. like like I'm rewatching. I couldn't believe it. I watched it. I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Uh, who was? It, it was. There? It was just bad crowd. It was just bad crowd work. That was the. That, that was the problem. Yeah. It's basically. Yeah. I Did just you said. It? I find it hard to use the p word with Michael Richard like, in that case. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see what Chappelle? Did you guys see what Chappelle did after that when he went back to the Laugh Factory? Yeah, yeah. that was hilarious. Yeah. Oh, oh my god! My god. I was dying. Hilarious. I Keep going, Kramer. <laughs> you gotta go. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. I don't know. I just like, like, like to this day, I am still at awe about what happened. I'm like, no, this can't be Kramer. And then when I'm watching Seinfeld. I would rewatch same episodes that I watched before he said that word. I'm like, I can't do it anymore. But, I, but this is what's funny though. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like it ruins the character. Like I, I mean, I, 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 I watch episodes of it and I'm like, the first thing that comes to my head is like, he's a racist. Like that's, that's, yeah. but that's me. That's like in my head. But there yeah. are some people yeah. that are true fans of Seinfeld that they watched it and, and they still watch it and they're like, it's totally fine because that doesn't affect the character that he's playing same like some there's some people out there that still like l you know listen and, Ooh, and 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 yeah so it's yeah. like it's, it's like it's like maybe that's not a total game changer for you i don't particularly agree with it mm -hmm. i mean like you know it's like mm -hmm. you know like i i like bill cosby for me like he was one of my idols but now if i hear anything or like his jokes are totally different to me now yeah absolutely yeah. oh yeah but yeah, there was just one episode in Curve Your Enthusiasm where they had a Seinfeld reunion, right? And Jason Alexander was making a jab at uh, Kramer. He goes, so uh, are you getting uh, enough work? And then uh, Kramer's like, well, ever since I uh, you know, said something really stupid, uh, I don't get a, a lot of uh, work happening. And then uh, the guy who plays Newman comes in, and he's he lost a lot of weight since then. Turns to uh, Michael Richards and goes, hey, you know, uh, you could always be in a Woody Allen movie. You know, you, 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 oh my God. that was good. And then there's a second attempt. They were at a barbecue party. I forgot which episode. I think it was in the same episode, uh, I mean, season. And then, like, uh, they're talking about directors to work with, right? And then uh, Jason Alexander's like, you know, there's Martin Scorsese, there's Woody Allen and stuff. And then and then at one point, Jerry uh, turns to uh, Michael Richards goes, he goes, no, no. 
Michael, no one's going to want to work with you. And he goes, yeah, I know. I heard Woody Allen wants to work with you. I'm like, if Martin Scorsese says he wants to work with you, these peanuts are definitely going to make – uh, these peanuts are making me salty. Then Kramer, uh, Jason's like, these pretzels are making me salty. It's a Woody Allen movie. <laughs> I'm like, the, 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 the embarrassment of what Michael had, he walked away in shame. I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah, and, and it, but it goes to show you, like, Mel Gibson made a comeback after after what he said. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, and and it's, it's like, there is, I mean, like, I do think, like, like, it's it's a fine line and you need to be very articulate in how you present your arguments but like there should be a room for redemption in the world you know what i mean like there should course, be yeah. i mean it, it depends the gravity of what you've done like if you've raped women then oh, i mean yeah. it's it's, oh, it's no, a pretty that's a, that's a tough one to come back to like you know like i mean like that's kind of like okay well maybe you'll do stand up in jail like maybe that's your audience now maybe that's yeah. like you know yeah, exactly. maybe that's what you do you adjust and you kind of adapt to it. Like it depends. Like there is like a gravity scale of like how mm. how messed up did you did you get, and yeah. whether your fan base can articulate their support for you yeah. going forward. For for Kramer, it's kind of like he was a pretty iconic character, but the, the, what he said, it was in the moment, he was so messed up, and like you see that, and you're like. It's it's hard for me to like believe that he's not racist. Like it's hard for me to not really believe that. Oh, yeah. and, and people change. Maybe he's changed now in 2020. COVID maybe made him less racist, and now he's like <laughs> a different person. But you know what I mean? Like there's also there needs to be room for redemption so that we can be have some more like empathy. Like for instance, like people that have been canceled that shouldn't be canceled. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Morgan Freeman. Like when people were trying to cancel Morgan Freeman because he was like creepy, and I was like. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were trying to cancel. Yeah, for like a month. For like a month, they tried to cancel the guy. What? And he was like, yeah, because he's being a, in, inappropriate with reporters. He was like, kind of like, he's just like, uh, hey, girl, you're hot movie. or whatever. It's kind of fucking stupid. Though. And then there was a CNN. I, I believe it was a CNN reporter that was going after him and kind of like uh. let kid the camera going as he was giving her compliments. I mean, by compliments, I mean like he's he's in his like seventies and. You know, he lived through racism. Let him be a little creepy. Come on. Like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> you oh. uh, well, he he well, didn't you want to enough. Yeah. But, but you know what? Oh, go ahead, Peter. Uh, go ahead. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Well, no. I was going to say, like, same thing with that Jim Carrey. I think Jim Carrey, I think he said, like, a line at the Sonic movie. He said something yeah. to the reporter. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then you were yeah. like, oh, my God. He's trying to, like, I was like, bro, he just said, like, <laughs> <laughs> like what the fuck? Like, Oh man, no, it's funny. out of control. I hear man, some like... women complaining about the fact that guys hesitate more now that to approach women. Well, with that kind of shit, that's that's no wonder. I mean, yeah. the guys are not going to approach <laughs> no. women for, for a long time. I and it is it's kind of like it's kind of like that's this is where it gets all messed up. Is like that shouldn't be the message. The message shouldn't be like don't be afraid of coming up to a person and being like, Hey, can I buy you a drink or whatever? Yeah. Like like it's it's when you it's it's like how you how do you go from that to like i can speak to like what